Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. How and why are two questions Bear County Sheriff's investigators are trying to answer tonight regarding a fatal construction accident. One man was killed, another injured when huge metal pipes fell from a truck and hit them. It happened in a neighborhood in West Bear County and as Katrina Weber reports, neighbors also have their own questions. The patrol cars gave it away right away that this was no ordinary day on the job in this construction zone. Bear County deputies were the first to find out after answering a call just after noon. Two workers somehow had ended up in the path of heavy metal pipes as they tumbled from the flatbed truck. They were unloading uh, the uh, load of pipes. Uh, sometime during that point, the load became unstable. One of the men, a 52-year-old, was hit in the head and killed. Another suffered a shoulder injury and was taken to a hospital. Just one of those pipes alone would be a crushing weight indeed, based on what I was told by one of the workers. Each one of those, depending on the lining, could weigh more than a ton. Both men were part of a crew, contractors, working an ongoing job to install gas lines in this area along West Military near North Grossenbacher Road. It's just heartbreaking. We see them all the time, you know, coming and going, working every day. Monica Solis and her family had no idea what they were seeing today as they headed home and found streets in their neighborhood shut down. I wondered what was going on, why we couldn't get home, and just told them an accident happened. Deputies also told OSHA, the federal agency that investigates workplace accidents like this. It's unclear what they found or how long this work site will be shut down. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New on the night beat, a man in his 20s is lucky to be alive after San Antonio police say three men armed with rifles went to his job and shot at him multiple times. It all happened just before 3.30 this afternoon at the Church's Chicken, located in the 1800 block of West Hildebrand Avenue, not far from West Avenue. Officers say three suspects parked, went inside, each one carrying a rifle, and started shooting at the man working behind the register. The suspects took off. We're told the man who was being shot at was not hit. Police say he was hit by shrapnel. He was taken to a hospital as a precaution. So far, police do not have a motive for the shooting, and they're still looking for the gunman. SAPD detectives investigating a murder after discovering a man shot several times behind the wheel of a vehicle. Officers were just called out before 11 last night to Cross Creek near Austin Highway and Walsham on the northeast side. Medics began life-saving measures, but it was too late and the man died. Witnesses told police they saw the passenger in that vehicle get out and shoot the driver before taking off. The SAPD helicopter and canine units searched the area, but they were unable to find the shooter. The search and investigation continue. Also over on the northeast side, a fight between two men escalates when one of them pulls out a knife. We're told it happened last night in the 4800 block of Ritterman Road near Goldfield Drive. Officers say the man with the knife cut the other man on the hand. The victim went to a nearby store for help. EMS was called out to that scene. The victim treated and released. The suspect fled before police arrived and has not been caught. New on the night beat, the family of McKenna Elrod Seiler came together today for a roping competition and scholarship presentation in honor of the 10 year old who was killed at Robb Elementary. Next week would have been her 11th birthday. Tonight, her mom and dad tell the night team's Lee Waldman this was the perfect way to honor their animal loving little girl. Hundreds of cowboys and cowgirls saddled up for a two day roping competition in the Uvalde County Fairplex all in honor of a brown eyed girl. When I thought about having a rope and I know that those saddles and buckles would, would last forever, long, long beyond us. And it's just, it's my hope that in a hundred years, uh, someone might find one of those in a barn and see her name and, uh, and, and speak her name. McKenna Elrod Seiler, the two-stepping horse lover, he wrote this song about. First time she called me daddy, it took my breath away. People are going to hear her name and, um, and know a little bit about the life of McKenna. McKenna loved the color purple, butterflies, and looked just like her mama, April Elrod. This time last year, April's yard was filled with McKenna's friends. Some 
of the other angels were there. So it's a hard day today, thinking back a year ago, and, and um, but it's, it's a good day to be here and honoring her and remembering her. They know McKenna would love seeing the arena filled with ropers and parking lot packed with barbecue pits. Even more, she'd be honored that her legacy is helping another young woman's dreams of college come true. Young lady, that scholarship is $20,000. Each time I back in the box, a little bit of McKenna will be with me. So as long as I'm going, McKenna's memory will be too. These prizes, the belt buckles, spurs, and saddles will be given away to today's champions from the roping and barbecue events. Siler tells me they're hoping to bring this back every year on the Saturday closest to McKenna's birthday on the 19th. He hopes next year's scholarship will be even more than this year. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. All right, this year's San Antonio Book Festival drew thousands of book lovers together to meet and talk with authors, both local and from across the country. The 11th annual San Antonio Book Festival was held at the newly renovated Central Library and the Southwest School of Art. More than 100 authors were featured this year. Visitors of all ages met prolific authors, had their books signed, celebrated their love for books, reading, and the yearning to learn. The event also included panels and discussions on the importance of literature and how stories can serve as reflections of ourselves. Seeing a lot of folks out there in short sleeves and shorts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this afternoon it was a summer like one across South Central Texas. We managed to find some sunshine and then highs topped off in the upper 80s and low 90s. Now we already have some relief that's filtering in to South Central Texas. All as we've seen a cold front push through the area this evening, and that is now well off to our south. But we did manage to find a couple of isolated, strong to even severe thunderstorms develop along that boundary, specifically in southeastern Atascosa and then Lavaca, Gonzales and DeWitt counties earlier this evening. All that activity has dissipated except for this one lone storm that is in western Live Oak County and far eastern McMullen County near George West that actually just got a severe thunderstorm warning. So I'll check out what that is likely entailing to some quarter size hail and 60 mile per hour wind gusts. But again, nothing like that for us here in San Antonio. Storm threat comes to an end over the next 30 minutes to an hour for our far southern counties and then the focus is going to turn to the wind later on tonight in a cooler Sunday that takes over as well. We'll get to all those details coming up in just a few. We will look forward to it, Mia. Oh, we're going to be hearing a lot of that open in the coming days. San Antonio is getting ready to party Fiesta 2023, ready to kick off this coming week and everyone's getting ready in party mode, including some of Fiesta's royalty. There was a big celebration last night with music and food as the coronation for the Charo Queen was held. Congratulations to Annika Chapa Primera, who is now the reigning queen for the San Antonio Charo Association. To celebrate, her fellow Fiesta Royals attended the coronation, the ceremony taking place at the San Antonio Charo Ranch. According to her bio on Fiesta San Antonio's webpage, Annika is a ninth grader at Brandeis High School and has been riding with the Charos since she was five. She has uh, says she can't wait to see everyone at a day in Old Mexico Fiesta event, which will be on April 30th. Lots of events coming up. Don't forget, now is the time to get your tickets to the Battle of Flowers Parade. Of course, KSAT offering you tickets to our parade viewing party. Besides a great seat to watch the parade, your ticket also includes two tacos, a drink, plus a hot commodity on parade day that is access to private restrooms. If they're like the ones that we've had here occasionally, we've had plumbing problems. They're very nice. <laughs> so you want to check those out. Just head over to KSAT.com. Well, believe it or not, shoppers are finally seeing a crack in the high prices of eggs. We're checking out how much they currently cost and we're unscrambling the meanings of cage free and farm fresh egg labels. Plus, last year they were busted for having shark fins in their freezer. Now a longtime Chinese restaurant is struggling to keep open the doors following a health inspection that resulted in the suspension of their license. We're taking you behind the kitchen door. And up next, the local community center continues to offer support and resources to those who may not know exactly where to go for help or what is already at their disposal. The event held today to change that coming up right after this break.
This week was WestCare Spring Resource Fair at the Ella Austin Community Center. Various community outreach programs attended to give some much needed love and care to the people of San Antonio. Organizations like the San Antonio Food Bank handed out food and snack packs to those in need and Metro Health provided immunizations and COVID booster shots as well as resources for physical and mental health. It was hosted by the nonprofit organization WestCare. The fair aims to bring necessary supplies and knowledge for people looking to better their lives. We provide them with the necessary resources that are necessary for them to understand that nothing is uh, uh, too hard for them to obtain. Supplies like water bottle cases and hand sanitizer were given out all of for West Care's cause of uplifting the human spirit. Yeah, lots of water and sunscreen today. It was really, really hot out there. And lots of pictures coming in this evening yeah. of some interesting cloud formations yes. out there. Looked a little apocalyptic at one point. It did. <laughs> I said I would ask, what is the technical terminology, not a mushroom cloud? Right, because that's what everybody was calling it. <laughs> right? What is this mushroom cloud? It did look a little scary at times. Yes. It was it was very tall. Um, but yes, the technical term for that is cumulonimbus incus. That is actually Latin for an anvil cloud. Take a look at this photo, which is just one variation of a ton of photos that we got in via KSAT Connect of, yes, what a lot of people were calling a mushroom cloud. This signifies a mature thunderstorm, the Latin term cumulonimbus incus. It's rising air in that updraft. It reaches the top of the troposphere. It can't quite punch into the stratosphere because that's where temperatures actually get a little bit warmer. So it just spreads out at the top. And yes, since we actually Actually did have some of those mature cumulonimbus clouds growing with those isolated storms that formed along the cold front right at sunset. We got some awesome photos just like that one. So again, thank you to everybody that sent those in to KSAT Connect. Now the front has now cleared the vast majority of South Central Texas and really most of the thunderstorm activity has dissipated except for this one severe cell that is now moving into the far western reaches of Live Oak County. So this is well south of San Antonio. After this, we are finished with a severe weather threat across the KSAT at 12 viewing area tonight. This is just west of George West. Here is I-37. Here's Highway 281 and where we are seeing those brighter pinks and even some black colors there in the reflectivity values. That is likely some hail that is trying to reach the quarter to half dollar size. So this is going to continue working its way farther off to the southeast. This particular severe thunderstorm warning goes through 1115. So if you are in western Live Oak County, just make sure that you are staying inside and we'll keep tabs on that behind it. Again, we are quiet and we will stay that way throughout the remainder of the night. The bulk of the activity now along this boundary well off to our east, stretching through places like Memphis, approaching the Jackson, Mississippi area and then stretching through Louisiana as well. On the back side of that for us here in South Central Texas, now that that storm threat is coming to an end, we are going to focus on the wind. We are pretty quiet in terms of breezy conditions this hour, but I think after midnight, once we really see that northeast wind kick on, some wind gusts upwards of 35 miles per hour will be possible, and that's going to continue throughout the first half of our Sunday. So it will be a bit windy out there tomorrow morning and then through the lunchtime hour, but I think as we head into Sunday afternoon, we will start to see those winds calm down. What those winds are doing for us, though, filtering in not only cooler air, but drier air. Dew points are starting to drop, especially the farther north and west that you go will stay pretty dry. Low humidity expected into our Sunday and even into Monday for the most part. But as we head into Tuesday and then the middle and later portions of next week, you're once again going to notice more of that muggy feel. I mentioned that cooler air as well. It is a cold front that moved through. So let's talk about what temperatures are going to do into our Sunday. We are in the 70s for the most part right now. I think through the 
overnight, we will see those thermometers bottom out in the 50s by wake up time tomorrow morning. And again, when you factor in that wind, likely will want at least the long sleeve if you are stepping out first thing tomorrow morning, but you're not going to need it by the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine is in store. It's going to be a beautiful day around 74 by 1 p.m. And then as we head into the second half of the day, daytime highs are topping off in the upper 70s and low 80s. So a bit cooler than what we saw out there earlier this afternoon. Again, that low humidity sticks with us through Monday before we see the moisture return and a few pieces of energy arrive and that could kickstart a few isolated storm chances into next week. So we'll keep eyes on it. You had me at low humidity. That's my love language. There you go. Mm, You're welcome. Gonna be warm for Fiesta Fiesta. Okay. Did you have to ruin it? <laughs> I'm not gonna be out there. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> the Brahmas did something they haven't done all Yay. season. Oh. Yeah. They won at home. Well, yeah, they won, they won at home, specifically at home. in the Alamo Dome. That is correct. And they needed this one to stay alive, alive in the hunt for the playoffs. One of four things that needed to happen, they needed to win tonight. We come back with the highlights from a great performance. Plus, Longhorns QBs put on a show today in the spring game. Got that, too. Next. Pressure is on for the Brahmas. Two home wins and two renegade losses clinch a playoff berth. And it all starts tonight against the Orlando Guardians in the Alamo Dome. Not an ideal start, though. Former Bernie High School quarterback Quinton Dormady drives the Guardians right down the field and finds Jordan Thomas for the four-yard touchdown. Two-point conversion is good, and Orlando leads 8-0. Late first half now, Brahma's down 14-3. Quarterback Jack Cohn airs it out and finds Nick Hawley for a gain of 34 yards all the way down to the six-yard line. Next play, Jacquez Patrick knifes in for the touchdown and San Antonio trails 14-10 at halftime. Third quarter now, trailing 14-13. Cone beats the blitz and hits Travis Toivonen, in, who breaks a tackle and races in for the 28-yard touchdown. Brahmas take their first lead of the game, 19-14. Fourth quarter, Guardians looking to rally. Not going to happen. Dormady is intercepted by Drew Beasley, and he takes it back 20 yards for a pick six. That holds up as the game-winning play. San Antonio wins a wild one, 25-23. They just need Arlington to lose tomorrow to stay alive. After a week one victory, the San Antonio Gunslingers hit the road to take on the Jacksonville Sharks. Fourth quarter, game tied at 42. Arvell Nelson escapes the rush, fires, is deflected off the back net, and caught by Khalil Rashad. In the Arena League, the net keeps it a live ball, so that's a touchdown. Gunslingers go on to win a wild game, 63-62 to in overtime, and improve to 2-0. and Last night, UTSA capped their spring practices with their annual Fiesta Spring Game in the Alamo Dome, and there were a number of high-profile players sitting out, including quarterback Frank Harris and safety Rashad Wisdom. With limited rosters and plays, the offense defeated the defense 7-6. Neither unit was even close to full strength, and tackling was not allowed in an attempt to keep everyone healthy. But even with all those restrictions in place, head coach Jeff Trailer thought the defense played really well. We pulled so many of those guys out. His call sheet was probably about that why, because he, he just couldn't call many pressures. And, you know, it's tough coaching defense for me because I'm like, get Brandon Brown out, get Cyrus out, you know, get Joe Evans out. Uh, coach, we're running out of people. I don't care. Get them out, you know. So it's tough on him just because of his calls, and he really can't do much. So there's a lot of just odd front quarters, you know, which is easier to call the offense against. And it's still good. It's just good to get to watch the kids. The 13th season in UTSA football history will begin on September 2nd, which is 140 days from now in Houston against the Cougars. The Texas Longhorns held their annual orange and white scrimmage this afternoon, and all eyes were on two quarterbacks, Quinn Ewers and Archie Manning. The white team defeated the orange team 21 to 10. Ewers looked like the starting quarterback, finishing the first half 15 of 20 for 193 yards and a touchdown. Manning, meanwhile, worked with a group of young wideouts who were predominantly walk-ons and showed some serious athleticism. What did Ewers think of the offense's performance today? I think it was a good day. Um, <clears throat> really excited to where this team's at. Um, and excited to build in the fall and throughout the summer. And uh, I think both of those guys did really well. Um, obviously, Arch, he just got here and he's, um, he's learned the offense great. Um, he's coming along great. And I'm, I'm really fired up about our quarterback room. I think we all get along real well and I'm excited for the future. 
Head coach Steve Sarkeesian said the Longhorns were injury free. They will open the season on September 2nd as well at home against Rice. We've got a USL championship rematch tonight in Kentucky. San Antonio FC taking on Louisville City FC. The Alamo City Club puts the pressure on in the fourth minute of play. Zico Bailey in front of goal. Puts a shot on, but the keeper is right there for the diving save. Great chance, but we're still scoreless. Head of the 23rd minute now, home team breaks through. Cross in front, and Wilson Harris heads it up and over a diving Jordan Farr for the opening goal. Louisville City leads 1-0, and that is the only goal of the match. SAFC falls for the first time this season, 1-0. Coming up later in sports, we head to Houston for a battle between the Rangers and Astros. This AL West race starting to pick up some heat early in the season, guys. Did Quinn Ewers lose the mullet? He did. Uh, he did. He shaved it in the offseason. Oh, looking very grown up. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> All right, still on the night beat. Major flooding, the result of historic rains in parts of Florida. What local and state authorities are doing to help the water recede faster to help speed up cleanup efforts. We're not open. You're not open at all? Not open at all. Not open at all? No, no. And a Chinese restaurant forced to shut down due to plumbing issues was allowed to reopen by health inspectors. But that guy right there told me he's ready to close for good. See what else he said when we go behind the kitchen door. Welcome back. Health inspectors recently suspended the license of a longtime Chinese restaurant on Broadway. The same place was in the news last year when illegal shark fins were found by state inspectors. I stopped by this week and was invited behind the kitchen door, but I was left wondering whether the business was still in business. Van's Chinese seafood restaurant located in the 3200 block of Broadway was forced to shut down following a February inspection. Their big problem, plumbing issues. There was no hot water and a cap was missing from the plumbing that caused a foul odor when the water ran. Small live pests were also seen in the business. The inspector gave them a score of 79, but forced them to close until hot water could be restored. Pest control services were hired and all fees were paid. The restaurant was closed when I stopped by, but someone eventually answered the door. I just wanted to follow up on your recent inspection that you guys had. Tan Yen Wen says he's not the owner, just the chef, but agreed to take us behind the kitchen door. He says they were only shut down for a day. The inspector, they let me open up after I pay for this one. Right. He also said they hired pest control. Yeah, I already is. got I show it to the inspector last month. Okay. Yeah, everything I'm doing, but I don't want this spend more money to, to fix it up now. While the business was allowed to reopen, he said they're no longer in operation. I want to get out of here. I don't want to do it and everything. I'm too old. So you're closing? I mean, closing. you're not even open anymore. Yeah, we all look only couple for my family. Oh, yeah. okay. He says they've been struggling since COVID hit. The business also got hit with a string of negative publicity last year when a state game warden seized more than $25,000 worth of shark fins from the business. After that, it took city health inspectors several attempts to even get inside for an inspection. Records show inspectors tried in June, October, November, and December last year and again in January and February of this year before finally being allowed inside. Gwen said it was just because they haven't been open, but then okay. he also said this. Uh, so are you opening at 5.30 on some days? Yeah, some, sometimes the family, sometimes come in. So are they open or not? It seems to depend on the day. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. I honestly still don't know. When and two other people associated with the restaurant were charged with several misdemeanors related to the possession of those shark fins last year, KSAT investigates asked the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for an update on the status of that case this week. A spokesperson said the investigation is now in the hands of U.S. Fish and Wildlife. When has denied any wrongdoing in that case. News across America now historic rainfall and flooding in southeast Florida this week have authorities and residents working to get things back to normal. Take a look at this neighborhood in Fort Lauderdale, homes still underwater. The Florida Division of Emergency Management says authorities are using vacuum trucks and pumps to try to get rid of that, ac the, that excess water. At one point on Wednesday, a month's worth of rain fell in just one hour. The National Weather Service has called it a one in a thousand year flood. 
Florida's governor has issued a state of emergency for Broward County. So far, no deaths have been reported. Over in New Mexico, three police officers are on administrative leave after shooting and killing a man as they responded to a call for help. It turns out they went to the wrong house. Body cam video of the April 5th incident released on Friday. In it, Farmington police officers can be heard confirming the address and trying to figure out if they're at the correct home. That's when the homeowner, a 52 year old man, reportedly answered the door armed with a handgun. All three officers opened fire killing the man. They are expected to be interviewed by investigators about those actions next week. Protests continue today against a Texas judge's ruling to suspend the use of mifepristone. Now, the Supreme Court has temporarily blocked the suspension of the so-called abortion medication. Protesters gathered outside the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. Rights, abortion rights protests were sparked after the federal judge in Amarillo ruled to suspend the FDA's approval of mif mifepristone earlier this week. It is used in the majority of abortions today in states that still allow abortion. But just yesterday, Justice Samuel Alito signed an order to temporarily block the suspension from going into effect, which would have happened today. Officials are look, looking into several causes of, uh, sorry, looking into several brush fires that were burning in suburban New York, including whether or not a CSX train may be to blame. The Rockland County Sheriff's Office reportedly says a CSX train was generating sparks as it was traveling through that area, and those sparks started dozens of small fires. Some of them threatened homes, but there were no reports of any of them actually catching fire. Some homeowners, though, reported damage to storage units and fences. CSX says it inspected the track and couldn't find any issues. The company stopped the train and is now working with local investigators. Have you filed your taxes yet? If not, the clock is ticking. Today is National Tax Day. Tax Day is the day your individual income tax returns are usually due to the federal government, but that's not the case this year for two reasons. April 15th falls on a Saturday, and in D.C., Emancipation Day is a holiday that's observed Monday. So the federal tax deadline has been extended this year to Tuesday, April 18th at midnight. So if you have, you have a few extra days to finish your taxes, and if you can't make Tuesday's deadline, it is strongly advised you file an extension. Coming up, finally, some relief at the grocery store. Egg prices are starting to come down. What are they now selling for? Plus, we explore what's in a name when it comes to farm fresh and cage-free eggs.